Okay, so you guys love some disturbing books, do you? Well, do we have some to add to your To Be Read collection today? And I'm Rachel, and today we are back with our top 10 disturbing books that should be feared a part two. But this time you won't need to worry about summoning any real demons, but you'll definitely have to ward off some horrendous nightmares. Read if you dare. Starting off at number 10, we have The Stand by Stephen King. This book is probably one of those books you should put off reading until after the pandemic is over, whenever that is. We all know Stephen King is quite literally the king of horror, but this novel will hit home way too hard and fill you with ideas of what could have been. The Stand is about an apocalyptic world that fell to a deadly flu-like virus intended to be used as a biological weapon. Already this sounds really familiar, but it gets worse. In this book, King introduces one of his most famous villains, Randall Hall. Once the outbreak takes hold, people start having visions of a benevolent woman and a terrifying dark man who is, of course, plotting to destroy the world. I'll stop now before I add any spoilers. Bear in mind, this book is a commitment. There are two versions, the 400-page one Stephen's publisher forced him to publish, or the 1,200-page unabridged version. Either way, get comfy and leave the light on because once you start, you won't be able to put this book down. Also, they made a TV show about it, so check that out too. But after you read the book. In our number nine spot today, we have The Collector. The Collector is a book that was written in 1963 by John Fowles and is a pretty wild thriller. This book is written from two separate perspectives and is about an absolute psycho who kidnaps a young woman who is an art student. He keeps her locked up in the cellar of his farmhouse and part of the novel is from the point of view of the captor and the other half is told from the perspective of the woman he has kidnapped. The beginning of the novel is from his point of view and it details his obsession with the woman and why he has formed this horrible plan. The part from her point of view is detailed through diary entries that she's made rather than regular narration. The whole book is an absolute roller coaster and is extremely interesting. Of course, both characters have quite a few developments over the course of the story, and sometimes things can get extremely dark, but the ending is one that none of us really ever saw coming. Coming in at number eight, we have The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Dude, I'm not claustrophobic, and obviously there are tons of Edgar Allan Poe short stories, books we could have used, but damn. We couldn't make this list without featuring him at least once, and this story felt right. Warning, some spoilers ahead, but also, this was written in like 1846, you've had time. The Cask of Amontillado is a story of revenge. Montresor was deeply insulted by his rival, Fortunato, and uses his fondness for Sherry to exact his revenge. But the way he does it, and the way the story builds around it is so skillful. It's so horrible you want to look away, but you can't. Montresor planned everything to a T, even making Fortunato bait himself into his own trap. Fortunato ends up watching Montresor build a wall of thick stone, trapping him inside a deep cellar forever. I think that's what gets me about this story is that he's he's watching his own demise and he can't do anything about it. It terrifies me. Oh man, so maybe I am claustrophobic. Maybe. So anyway, check that one out. In our number seven spot today, we have Tender is the Flesh. Tender is the Flesh is a dystopian novel that was originally written in Spanish by Agustina Basterica. This novel is based in a world where a terrible virus has wiped out all animals except for humans. Instead of living a vegan lifestyle, humans have adapted in a way where cannibalism is now legal. This novel describes the process of breeding and slaughtering humans just for the means of consumption. Humans who are bred for food have their vocal cords removed in order to make them easier to control, and because of the fact that meat meant for human consumption should certainly not be able to speak. The main character of this story is a man named Marcos, and he is a human meat supplier who is a little unsure about these new societal rules, but we also delve into his personal life and the things he has gone through previous to this point. Marcos is divorced and everything changes when he is given one of the female humans who is meant to help with the production of the human meat. This story is absolutely insane, and while the entire premise is quite dark, the twist this book has is truly unbelievable. So coming in at number six, we have 1984 by George Orwell. I mean, duh, we're putting this book on here, of course. 
It's terrifying. This is the most terrifying love story you will ever read, and you should. This book perfectly illustrates the bone-chilling possibilities that could happen if a government decided to take totalitarianism as far as it could go. It's been banned in the past for its social, sexual, political content, which is hilariously ironic because the whole book is about... Uh, what happens if censorship goes too far. From the horrors of erasing human beings through unpersoning, persecuting people for thought crimes, the creation of newspeak for abolishing love, all the way to the most gruesome kinds of torture, like, ugh, think Game of Thrones. There are images I cannot erase from my mind. I remember knowing that Orwell wrote this as a commentary on Stalinism, but I didn't expect the love story. The two main characters endeavor to commit a small rebellion, which is to simply fall in love, because that's the only Thing that they can do to fight this massive establishment. The way Orwell finds ways of igniting the humanity in his readers in order to highlight the terror of the circumstances they're in, it's haunting. The scary element of this book isn't a killer clown or a monster with 18 eyes. Instead, it's absolute power. This book outlines the terror of power in a world that's gone too far and you won't be the same after you read it. In our number five spot today, we have A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing. A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing is a stream of consciousness novel that was written by Emer McBride. This novel tells the story of a girl growing up in a traditional Irish family and all the struggles that she faces. At a first glance, this might not seem like a horrible thing that should be feared, but this novel goes deep. The writing style is absolutely fantastic and really highlights exactly what this character is going through. We never get a chance to know the name of the girl, but we get to know so much about her long-winded Catholic mother who is cruel, her disabled brother, and her very creepy uncle. Without giving much away, this really does set the scene for what's to come. This book can be hard to read because of the content, but it can also be hard to read because of the writing style. But as you go through, you understand why it is written this way, and it is genius. This book is intense, and while it took Emer nine years too long to publish it, that really is a testament to how perfect it is. Coming in at number four, we have The Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Jack Finney. Uh, I can't. This book, I don't want to sleep for weeks. For weeks. Imagine that an alien invasion happens and you can't even see it. Before you know it, everyone you know and love is acting strangely. Soon bodies start piling up, all while more and more people become something you can't explain. Written in 1955, Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Jack Finney is so terrifying. It has sparked four movies and paranoid horror literature. The story recounts the horrific experience of a silent invasion where alien beings disguised as plants steal the bodies of living humans while they sleep. The most terrifying part for me was the struggle for the characters to try and stay awake because if they didn't, the creatures would be right behind them in like s s what seemed like seconds. Even thinking about it right now makes my heart race. <laughs> Have you ever tried not falling asleep in math class or an exam? Yeah, imagine that, but your life depends on it. Terrifying. This is the kind of horror book that will make you want to drink like 28 Red Bulls so you never sleep again. In our number three spot today, we have Exquisite Corpse. Exquisite Corpse is a horror novel that was written by Poppy Z. Bright and was published in 1996. The publication for this book was quite a process for Poppy. In 1991, she had a deal with a publishing company to write three books. Exquisite Corpse was the final of the three and this company refused to publish it due to its violent content. After sending it to multiple other publishing companies, the overwhelming consensus was that the writing was fantastic, but the content was being described as too nihilistic, too extreme, and a bloodbath without justification. Of course, however, the novel did eventually end up being published, and a lot of people now understand the reviews the publishing companies were giving it. While a fantastically written book, this story follows Andrew Compton, who is a convicted serial killer and cannibal, who ends up getting a second chance at living life beyond the cell. This story is very raw and absolutely horrifying. The parts of the story I haven't told you are certainly not for the faint of heart. Coming in at number two, we have The Truth by Nick Cutter. This next one is Lucy McPhee, Queen of Dark Approved. She loves a good scary book, does our Lucy. The Troop is basically Lord of the Flies meets Alien, kind of. I asked her why she thought this book was so scary and she said, it's scary because the kids have to become adults real damn fast and no one is there to help them. Also touches on how differently people react in, in unprecedented circumstances. Some lose their grip on reality. I love that word unprecedented. I've heard it way too many times this year. 
Essentially, Dr. Tim Riggs takes a group of boys out on a camping trip in Canada when out of nowhere, the troop has to battle a vicious infestation of contagious intestinal worms who starve their hosts. Some go mad and lose their grip on reality. I'll stop there so I don't, you know, spoil everything, but considering this one is Queen of Dark approved, you know why it's on this list. In our number one spot today, we have The Wasp Factory. The Wasp Factory is a novel that was published in 1984 and was written by Ian Banks. This is the first novel that was published from this writer as the novels he had previously written had not been accepted. And this one was his attempt at writing a more mainstream novel. Well, it worked since it got published, but this novel is anything but mainstream. It follows a psychopathic teenager who is living on a secluded Scottish island. The teenager describes his childhood and the things that went on with some very gruesome details. We read not only about his past, but also the past of his family and how twisted it really is, which also gives us insight into just how wild this guy's mind really is. There are some pretty horrific depictions of violence in this book, which is what led to its mixed reviews. It certainly is a critically acclaimed novel, but it has also also been called a work of unparalleled depravity, and that certainly speaks volumes about what exactly goes on. All right, guys, that has been our list top 10 disturbing books that should be feared part two. As always, like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what books you would have added to this list. I've been your host, Olivia Kozlowski. And I'm Rachel Fisher, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys. The book actually has been banned for its social, political, and sexual content, which is hilarious because the book talks about what happens if censorship. Talks about what happens if censorship. <laughs> Okay, coming in at number two, we have the true. I'm a monkey. Stop this. This book is intense, and while it took Emer, this book is intense, and while it took Emer nine years, there are images that I can't erase from my mind. From my mind, there are images I can't erase from my mind.